For this video, I'm going to present to you my ultimate tribute to the Crystal River Mall, quite possibly my home away from home. Honestly, I didn't think I would be in this situation again, especially in a month. It's going to be hard for me to, I guess, discuss this without um, sadness in my voice, so I'm just going to say it. I have a lot of attachment to this particular mall. I spent countless years in it, to be honest with you. I did a video last month about uh, Paquette's Farm Mall Tractor Museum and Leesburg going out of business, and again, that was something I was really sad to see happen. and. Uh, just a couple weeks later, the, the Crystal River Mall announced that it was sold and it was closing down as of August 20th. As a local in the area, um, it's kind of heartbreaking for me. And I realize a lot of uh, other locals are, are telling me, hey, we've got the historic district, there's still shopping options. It's, it's really not the same. The Crystal River Mall is a time capsule of 1990 when it was built. And you get a different vibe. I guess I'm nostalgic for the years I was in high school and, uh, you know, grew up in Florida. There's a magic about being able to eat in a food court. And, you know, as Amazon.com and all the online shopping has kind of created what's known as the retail apocalypse, there's something tangible that we're losing. You know, it's a part of American culture, like the movies that Kevin Smith made with mall rats and those type of things. That's something that future generations aren't going to be able to experience. That's right, you know, Generation X, we loitered in malls and food courts and, you know, we sipped on orange Juliuses and hot pretzels and we like to give, I guess, the, the poor security guards that work there a little hard time because sometimes we even uh, bring our skateboards to the parking lot. But those are things that, that you know, buying your, your items online, you're just not going to replicate those type of wonderful coming-of-age experiences. The city of Crystal River is losing something, and I, and I don't really think they understand just what they're losing until it's going to be gone. Buying items online, it's all about isolation and being alone. And when you go to the mall, it's all about social interaction and community and being able to see your neighbors and you know, enjoy shopping for the latest deals and sales for Black Friday and go into the, the, the GameStop at the mall to see what the, the newest releases are for the week on uh, your PlayStation or Xbox. And all that stuff is, it, we're losing that. And I can still remember vividly of my grandparents bringing me to the JCPenney's or Sears for, and they'd, we'd be shopping for new clothes and school supplies for each new school year. I mean, it was, it was a, an experience where we loaded up the car and we would go to the mall. So let's briefly talk about the history of the mall. So in 1988, real estate developer Edward J. DiBartolo announced that he was developing a mall for this area. It would take about two years to build, and uh, the grand opening was on October 17, 1990. And it was a huge shindig. They had uh, uh, some pretty big old Hollywood uh, acts like the Letterman and Phyllis Diller here for the grand opening to perform. So the mall debuted with three anchors. They had the Belk, a Sears, and a Kmart, with a JCPenney's added on a few years later. The mall was really unconventional, to be honest. I've never seen a mall laid out like this one. It was known as a, a hub-and-spokes design, where it was kind of like a giant square, and uh, it had four pathways to the mall entrances. It was really, really unique in that regard. In the center of the mall, they had the food court, and even that itself was very unique. The food court was highlighted by the 60-foot-tall towers that were in the center, which held up a fabric roof, 
And it was quite the process uh, getting that fabric roof approved in Florida. Uh, they actually needed an exemption uh, granted to them by the uh, city council of Crystal River. And because I've spent so much time in this mall, I've been here during uh, some of those torrential Florida thunderstorms. And I got to tell you, that is a re remarkably robust uh, roof system. I don't know how or what type of fabric they're using, but I mean, hurricanes have come through here a couple times and that fabric ceiling never budged. So this place was built really strong, um, just amazing. Um, the, and even now, the, the condition of this mall is remarkable. So this mall was open for roughly 32 years. Um, it opened in October 1990 and is officially closing in August 2022. This mall has always been a scrappy little prize fighter Kind of like the uh, Rocky Balboa of retail. It always kept reinventing itself to try to stay relevant, and it, it did a pretty good job. In its later years, it kind of functioned as a business incubator. Um, one of the things that they had done at this mall was they lowered the rents to make a lot of small businesses uh, viable. And, uh, you know, a lot of upstart uh, stores started here. And you'll notice now that uh, most of the stores are locally owned, mom and pop type of organizations. They had a lot of franchise stores early on. You know, they had the Game Stops and the Radio Shacks and uh, the GNC and those type of things. And towards the end, it was more of the artisans, you know, people who made uh, local artwork and arts and crafts and handmade goods and uh, that type of stuff and, and it really was uh, a quirky mix of retail. Another thing they added in the later years was the executive hub. So they would um, again uh, for the the new business startups they would uh, establish these executive suites and meeting rooms and you know they were trying everything from office space to uh, retail to uh, community volunteer organizations having offices here all kinds of unique aspects to keep the mall viable. Uh, the first rebound that I can remember was in 2013 when they announced that the, the Belk store was closing. Um, there were plans and they got actually really far along. They had started uh, repurposing the Belk building after it was vacated. Uh, the volunteers had come in and started making the preparations. Uh, they were on phase one of uh, building an aquarium there. It was going to be kind of like a sea life aquarium uh, where um, you were going to basically see interactive displays and they were going to talk about the manatee history of uh, Crystal River. And that resurgence w kept going uh, through to about 2018 when uh, Just Amuse Me Entertainment, also known as Jam Entertainment, they actually took over the uh, former Kmart and um, built out a, a family entertainment center. They had a restaurant, a bar, billiards. Uh, they had brought in arcade machines, axe throwing, all kinds of stuff. And they had future expansion plans right here at Crystal River Mall. They were planning to add a, a skating rink and an indoor go-kart track. I mean, it was going to be huge. It really was. And this was uh, late 2020 into 2021. I mean, they were uh, planning to make it big. And, and again, the off again, on again, uh, Aquarian wasn't completely dead. The Belk building was still there. Uh, they were just having trouble with the money. And I can understand the financial issues because the economy again took a huge hit. It was ultimately COVID and the lockdowns and the lack of financing available after the economy had contracted. That is ultimately what led to the end of the Crystal River Mall. People have been asking about Jam. What do we have going on in the old Kmart building? Well, we've been open for about three months now, and um, we have lots going on. This Friday is the grand opening celebration because we have finished our restaurant and bar. It's been open a few weeks now. This here is our axe throwing lanes for all ages. So that means even the kids who aren't old enough to throw on the regular axe lanes have a place that they can play as well. We've got swings set up just for some extra fun. We've got these claw games up here. We've got cornhole and this ring toss set up. Some candies and Cokes up at the front counter for your convenience. 
This game over here is called Koob, which is also known as Viking Chess because supposedly the Vikings started it. Um, only they played with skulls and crossbones. We have our axe lanes over there. There's our giant Jenga. Here we have some giant Uno cards. Some giant dominoes. We've got air hockey. We've got our stage set up. We're ready to rock with Jojo Jones tomorrow night for our grand opening celebration. You see this gentleman on the wall up here? His name is Langley. He is our comic book character. He's the first of many. And Langley is a Viking fighter. He kind of is over this area of our building, which will eventually expand. We have pool tables. And back here you will find the underground cantina. The underground cantina is a full restaurant and full bar. As you can see, plenty of seating. We will be adding more for tomorrow night as well as our comedy night on Saturday. For any of you who are looking to come out for those, there'll be plenty of seating, plenty of room to social distance. We do have a max capacity of 956 people right now and that number will grow. We have a calendar of events. There's something going on as you can see every day of the week, sometimes more than once a day. This is our event for tomorrow night. The grand opening celebration with Jojo Jones. This is our event for Saturday night. Comedy night with Devin Siebold who is really funny. I hope that you guys come out for that. That includes dinner as well. Yes, I am. We are having live band on Friday night this week. So tomorrow night with Jojo Jones and the generators will be here on that live band, on that stage. That's our Mighty Tinies. Mighty Tinies is Saturday morning from 11 to 12:30. That's for kids of all ages to come out for open play just $15 and we do age appropriate games during that time. Like I uh, was saying, we have comedy night on Sunday, or Saturday night. We have our grand opening celebration featuring Jojo Jones and the Generators tomorrow night. And we are getting set up. Just to recap for those of you that just joined us, this is Jam, which is Just Amuse Me, in the Crystal River Mall. There's our stage set up and ready for Jojo Jones to rock the night out. We have a bunch of different games, including our axe throwing, the air hockey, pool table, we've got uh, giant Jenga down back there, we've got giant Uno up here, giant dominoes, we've also got cornhole and ring toss, we've got an, uh, axe throwing lanes up there, uh, claw games, we're going to have a lot of fun tomorrow night. We're going to do giveaways and some other games. Back there you can see is the underground cantina, our full restaurant and bar. And yes, I am. We will be having more bands in the future as well. Right now we're trying to get everyone in here so that uh, we can generate more bands and have more fun. And we hope that all of you join us tomorrow night for our grand opening celebration of the Underground Cantina and Bar, located right here inside JAM at the Crystal River Mall. We are inside the old Kmart building, and we will be eventually expanding. These walls will push back. We will have uh, some mini bowling behind these walls. We will also eventually add go-kart tracks and indoor rock climbing as well. And then we'll have um, more arcade games are coming as well. We hope to see you guys all tomorrow night. It will be a lot of fun. Again, JoJo Jones and the Generators will be right there on that stage rocking the night out. We will have plenty of room and we will have a great time. Lots of giveaways, 
food to be eaten, drinks to be had, games to be played. It'll be a fun night for everyone. All ages, come out, enjoy our grand opening celebration tomorrow night. Because me showing you this just on the Facebook Live does it no justice. You need to come and experience it for yourself. And we will see you either tomorrow night for our grand opening. And you can come back on Saturday night for comedy night as we feature comedian Devin Siebold from Comedy Central. I look forward to seeing you guys all here at JAM and the Underground Cantina. One of the things I'd like to briefly touch upon is the reputation that this mall had, I guess, for a few small individuals, pathetic people, honestly, in my opinion. I remember watching a, a video on YouTube of a, a guy pretending to push a baby carriage through the mall in order to try to uh, film without authorization, and it, and it didn't even work, and he got kind of sore about being called out and kicked out by security. If you got to pretend to push a baby stroller through a mall to do something, you really need to reevaluate your life choices, man. That's all I'm going to say. And the fact that you're doing it to, I uh, guess, highlight or exploit somebody else's hardship, what is wrong with you? The current retail environment is hard enough without having video vultures in there trying to damage people's livelihoods. It's, it's so... it's... I can't even... And for those that throw around the term dead mall loosely, just for the record, a mall isn't officially dead until it's shuttered and closed to the public. Stop using the term so prematurely. All you're doing is hurting a bunch of small business owners trying to make a living. So one of the things about me is I'm notoriously indecisive. Um, for years I was working, um, driving between Homosassa Springs and Denellen, and I would always stop here at Crystal River because they had the food court. I loved being able to just kind of improvise what I was going to eat that day when I got here because I, I never knew what I wanted. I used to walk around and torture the guys at the, the counters because I was always so indecisive uh, when, when it came to the food. But I would I loved the Italian restaurant. They had um, the best New York style pizza anywhere was right here at the food court. The, the Chinese restaurant, uh, obviously, you look at the prices on the menu, they were quite good. And I spent a lot of time at the Hardwood Smokehouse too. They had this this redneck taco. It was it's the funniest name, but you know, it really fit this mall. There were so many quirky, silly things. There was a playfulness that this mall had that it's just kind of hard to to explain. Um, everything about this mall was unique and different. And uh, I'm telling you, the, the the food at the Hardwood Smokehouse was delicious. And again, it's another huge loss to this area. I don't think they they opened anywhere else uh, once the mall closed uh, and, and the COVID lockdown. Uh, that was the end of the uh, the smokehouse, and I don't think they reopened at a different location. One of the things too, they had the uh, Nikki B's All American Hot Dog, and they had these giant, giant. There was a hot dog challenge. I think it was like uh, thirty or forty dollars, and they challenge you to eat like this this massive amount of hot dogs to see if you puke or something like i guess they were trying to train people for like those hot dog eating contests or whatever and again this place was so fun and playful and almost every business here had that playfulness embedded in the business itself it was just it's just a remarkable place so as i walk around the exterior of the mall I think I should talk a little bit about the Rural King. So the Rural King, um, they purchased the building from Sears. One of the reasons why Sears was so valuable to uh, the chief embezzler in charge, uh, Eddie Lampert, was uh, they owned most of the real estate that the Sears stores were sitting on. So as Eddie Lampert was uh, chop shopping the entire company that was Sears, he uh, sold off the real estate piecemeal. And uh, the Rural King is going to remain open even after the mall closes. If you are planning to come to the Rural King, don't worry. Um, even um, after August, the Rural King will still be open. And I guess whatever redevelopment happens to the Crystal River Mall, they're going to have to incorporate uh, the Rural King into those plans because the Rural King is sitting on a separate piece of real estate. It's uh, its own plot. It's its own pad. They don't own it. Uh, it's not going to go with the, the purchase of the mall. So one of the things that I'm most nostalgic for at this mall is probably the Regal Cinema. 
this is still, to this day, even though it's been closed since 2020, the nicest movie theater in all of Crystal River. There is a Citrus Cinemas on the other side of town, but it's really old. I think it was built in the 1960s or something, and it's really tired looking and sad and pathetic. And this is a new modern movie theater that was built here at the mall. I believe it was built around the year 2000. And uh, it wasn't originally built with the mall. So the mall opened in 1990 without a movie theater. And um, they took over the Camelot Music Store as the main entrance to the movie theater and six adjoining storefronts. And again, this was probably the second resurgence of the mall. The mall had gone through all these phases. And when the Regal Movie Theater opened up, the mall s surged in popularity again, obviously. Um, and, and I'm telling you, uh, coming here for Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises, this place was packed. Those Christopher Nolan fans just packed this place. I mean, the, the, the lines were wrapped around through the, the food courts. This mall was thriving for decades. I was a local. I was here. Um, there's a lot of misinformation about that on the internet. And I'm here to set the record straight. This place was definitely booming all the way up to probably about 2014, 2015. That's when things started to go sideways. And uh, the anchors started closing like Belk and J.C. Penney's and at the very end Kmart. One of the things you'll notice about this video is it's very long. And I've got a lot of uh, footage of areas that haven't been seen to the public in years. Um, I actually... Uh, asked for permission and got the blessing of the staff of the Crystal River Mall and I'm forever grateful for that and because of that uh, now I'm able to go inside the Regal Movie Theater for the first time since 2020. This has been closed to the public for two years. Uh, they closed for the COVID-19 lockdown and never reopened. So it's the first time anyone's been inside the theater and I'll be honest with you the movie theater is still pristine. Uh, the A lot of the, the Theater seats are still intact. The projectors are still in place. You can see that uh, you could turn on the switch and show movies in a lot of these theaters tomorrow. The main theater did get uh, decommissioned, but the smaller theaters, like the seven or eight smaller ones, they're still ready to go. And even though the place has been closed two years, it's amazing how clean and perfect everything is inside. The movie theater looks like it was open yesterday. Um, most of those theaters are just, and the whole mall looks pristine. I mean, the level of maintenance here is unique for a mall that's struggling with vacancy. I mean, I have been to other malls that, um, you know, you have 50 garbage cans and buckets catching all the leaks from the roof, and um, you can see mold up in the ceiling, and the air conditioning isn't blowing cold, and all kinds of stuff. None of that stuff ever happened here. You know, there was an issue with uh, mold, I think, a decade ago, and they resolved it quickly. They took pride in this place to the bitter end. You can see that just talking, because I had, I had a lengthy conversation with the security guards over the years, and I talked to the, uh, the, the manager here at the, the mall, Millie, and you do, you, you can still hear that sense of pride, and you can see it. It's, it's tangible. It's visible. Even the, the landscaping around the, the mall entrances are flawless. And that's usually one of the first things um, done with cost cutting. And it never happened here. Uh, this place looks beautiful. I'd also like to talk a little more about uh, the time walking around that Regal Theater. It was, it was surreal. It was such an amazing experience. And it's, it really is a, a, a place that's trapped in a moment of time. I was really shocked but also very pleased to see that uh, all the movie posters were still up on the walls from uh, when it closed in 2020 and it really was uh, walking around like uh, even though it doesn't seem like that long ago it was kind of I mean 2020 was quite the tumultuous year and to basically uh, travel back in time I'm not sure anybody would want to but nonetheless, it was kind of nice, at least in the terms of what movies were open. Because, you know, I saw a movie poster on the wall for Tenet and some 
pretty amazing movies uh, that were trying to bring the movie industry back in a post-COVID-19 world. And seeing the Tenant movie poster and the Ghostbusters Afterlife, and I actually I got a kind of a warm and fuzzy feeling seeing the movie posters for a couple great movies. Another uh, restaurant that I have fond memories of at the uh, Crystal River Mall was uh, Chocolates by Vanessa. You'll notice that um, it's closed now, but uh, when I was walking through the uh, food cart, you'll see the little striped canopy um, basically across from Nikki B's uh, All American, I guess. And uh, they used to make this uh, homemade chocolate that was just mm, to die for. And I used to go there all the time, I would say circa 2017, 2018, something like that. And uh, just absolutely the best uh, homemade uh, candies and chocolates. It was it was amazing. I think they closed right around COVID when uh, COVID lockdown kicked in, probably 2019, early 2020, something like that. So where do I place a lot of the blame for? the closure of this mall, I place it on this guy. Oh, look at this. This is the cover of Business Week. Man, I don't think this is aged very well. Berkshire Hathaway, huh? Yeah, sure. So just for the record, when this cover uh, story was written for Business Week, Eddie Lampert had uh, 2,400 Kmarts, and the guy must be a master magician because he made all but three disappear as of this year. That's right, 2,400 Kmart stores, and now he's got three. That's not business savvy. That's business incompetence. And somebody should have pulled the rug from under him way before that happened. But it, but it gets even worse because he did the same thing to Sears. Sears had about 2,000 stores when they merged Kmart and Sears together, and Sears is down to around 20 stores now nationwide. So again, he took two companies and completely destroyed them. So why do I mention Kmart and Sears? Well, guess what? Crystal River Mall, two of the four anchors were run into the ground by Eddie Lampert himself. That's right, the Kmart and the Sears, they both closed at this mall, and that was the first step, I think, towards uh, the closure now in August. It basically was uh, the loss of Sears and Kmart. The loss of those anchors, and then the loss of the Office Max in 2020 on the out parcel, Regal Cinema's failure to reopen in the mall, that was enough, and I guess that was the time when the, the owners of this mall decided to sell. And when the mall got sold, Jam Entertainment basically canceled their expansion plans. Basically all the tenants were asked to leave by the end of August, and it was just one domino after another that just kept falling down. Another part of the interesting history of this mall is the the sign for the food court. You know, it looked peculiar to me. It's not how I remembered it because uh, I knew something was off and I couldn't couldn't pinpoint it. So I googled it, and the sign used to have neon light, and I thought it was weird that it was just like a static wood sign. So I I, I didn't understand. So I looked it up, and apparently in 2019 the neon sign caught on fire, and it was a kind of a big deal. Um, and uh, they replaced it with this just static sign. So just one of those quirky things that happened here at the mall. You know, if I'm doing a video about the history of the mall, I figured I should at least mention it. So as I sit here editing the footage of, um, you know, the video I shot this week, you know, a lot of these long walking segments where I'm either walking around the exterior of the mall or the uh, interior of the mall, I can see my film professor kind of busting my chops about the pacing of this video. You know, he always wanted me to cut things tight, and I normally do. You know, you'll notice that the the vast majority of of the videos on this 
uh, channel or you know anywhere from five to ten minutes long usually but when I'm doing these retrospectives these uh, tribute videos to these uh, places that were special to me uh, I really kinda leave it all in and anything that I film um, I, I kinda try to incorporate in the video no matter how sluggish uh, the pacing is so if you're um, unhappy with the pacing I apologize I uh, I just felt like it was important to include all the video footage that I shot just because this is a time capsule and I want people to, to see how this place was uh, circa July 2022. So for those of you who have never been to the Crystal River Mall, I'm going to describe the geography, um, basically the layout of what you would experience when you came to this mall. Um, the main entrance uh, for the mall, you would come in off of uh, US-19 which I believe is also known as uh, Sun Coast Parkway. And as soon as you get in the entrance, you would see uh, the Office Max on your right-hand side on an out parcel. And that was like pretty much the very first thing you'd see. And as you drive up uh, into the entrance, you would see the, uh, I guess the Sears would be the first anchor. Uh, and that would be kind of dead center when you pull up uh, the driveway. And then off to your... Uh, left hand sign it would be Kmart. Now if you made a right hand turn and headed around the uh, the mall perimeter road as you go back towards the back of the mall parking lot you would see the JC Penney next that would be the next building and, and as I mentioned earlier that building was built later on the uh, the three anchors were basically situated in the front of the mall uh, and faced the US-19, but uh, J.C. Penney's was behind pretty much everything else and wasn't visible from US-19. So as you continued on around that uh, perimeter road, you would finally see the Belk. And the Belk is very, very distinctive. What's interesting about the Belk store and why it was tried, they tried to repurpose it into an aquarium is that they're really unique glass roof panels. And it is the coolest looking thing. And, and I totally see where they were headed with that aquarium idea because it does. It looks like an aquarium. Um, and it's kind of an unusual choice for, I guess, a high end retailer like Belk. They were trying to be different and they wanted all that skylights and everything. And it's beautiful. And it really is, again, retrospectively, it's it's a sad day for me because the whole idea of, of basically repurposing this place as an indoor theme park, it's a really smart idea. I mean, this place would have worked well in that uh, form. People who aren't aware of Crystal River, this is already a tourism area. It's mostly known for uh, all the great fishing opportunities, and uh, there's a lot of boat launches for people bring their power boats. The other thing Crystal River is known for are the manatees. Uh, this is one of the few places in the world where you can uh, swim in the freshwater uh, rivers and all that other stuff and swim with wild manatees. Now you're not allowed to touch the manatees but you know they were there and they're usually playful. Sometimes they bump into the, the people in the water and it happens but you're not supposed to touch them. The tourism market was already here. So building on that tourism was a smart idea. And again, it's just they ran out of time and they ran out of money. And it really is kind of a sad day for Crystal River because this being an indoor theme park would have been a huge draw for this area. And, and let's face it, the economics of this area, uh, they, this city really could have used it. As I continue to walk around, um, it's not quite as distinctive as the Belk, but you can easily spot the former Kmart by the, uh, the cyclone fencing area, uh, that was the garden center. And uh, again, Kmart was a really big draw for this mall. Um, I know most of the teenagers would go to the Kmart because they had the video games before the GameStop opened. Uh, GameStop opened much later. I think GameStop opened somewhere around like 2004, 2005. They weren't in the mall uh, the entire time from my recollection, although I'm a little foggy on that. Um, but the Kmart, uh, not only that, but it was fun to go to the Kmart too because they had an icy machine. I used to get the Coca-Cola ices at, at Kmart and they had the snack bar with the hot pretzels and, you know, it was a Kmart. You had the blue light specials and you had the, the, 
amazing sale prices and you know it was the late 90s early 2000s and he go shop for dvds and you know i would i remember going there for sega genesis games and then later on playstation 1 games so i mean kmart was great so you'll notice that most of the uh, the really popular businesses were up front near the mall entrance i guess that's uh, relatively intuitive but um you know the work it out gym was basically uh, just to the right of the main mall entrance and just uh, to the right of that is where the Sears was and the Sears is now the Rural King which is still going to remain open after the mall closes uh, and as you go into the mall entrance at that front entrance and go inside the mall uh, the, uh, the smokehouse was right there um, on your right hand side and uh, the GNC and Bodie's tree store were right there as well as the RSVP store that was on the left hand side when you walked in towards the main uh, area basically and and the food court was directly in front of you that's the, kind of the geography of walking inside the mall another really popular store in the mall was the the coastal creations which was a bunch of handmade goods and you know they had the, the manatee artwork and a lot of uh, manatee themed uh, clothing and Crystal River, you know, uh, t-shirts and that kind of stuff. You know, they had the, the typical hair salons, health salons, that kind of stuff, nail salons. I don't know anything about them, but um, I guess they, they seem like they were reasonably priced. I mean, I saw uh, some fairly uh, affordable massages and I never did, but I considered it. I just, I kind of focused on my stomach when I was at this mall personally. One of the other cool things and unique businesses that I've never seen done, never seen done anywhere else, was they had a car wash while you shop business out in the parking lot, and and that kind of blew me away. I've never I've never seen an auto detailer car wash kind of thing done in a mall. It's just that's kind of the quirkiness of this mall. So I should briefly talk about the ownership of this mall over the years. So in 1990, the Edward J. D. Bartolo Corporation opened the mall, and they spent $60 million building it. In 1992 was the official opening of the J.C. Penney. In 2006, Simon Properties purchased the mall. Simon uh, hit hard times by the end of 2009 because of um, the recession. In 2011, uh, Wells Fargo Bank foreclosed on the Simon loan because they defaulted on their $16 million mortgage. Then in 2012, uh, Kohan Retail Group uh, purchased the mall and also pretty badly neglected the mall. The Simon years and the Kohan years were definitely the darkest days for this mall, in my opinion. Uh, the maintenance was really poor towards the end of the Simon years as well as Kohan. In 2016, the United Realty Group purchased the mall, and this was basically the new beginning for the mall. They uh, invested a lot of money in the mold remediation over on the J.C. Penney anchor. Uh, they completely renovated and updated the, the public restrooms, and they basically uh, spent uh, millions uh, fixing up the uh, interior from years of neglect, as well as uh, cleaning the uh, fabric roof for the first time since the mall opened. A huge investment. You could tell they were planning to stay here, but unfortunately nobody could have anticipated a, a global pandemic. Another thing about the Crystal River Mall that I'd like to highlight is the architecture. When DeBartolo was planning out this mall, I've never seen a mall engineered this well when it came to uh, natural lighting. You can see uh, so well because everything about the mall is bright and airy. You know, you've got the huge fabric roof in the center of the mall, and that lets in so much light. And then all the uh, skylights pretty much in every hub and spoke of the mall. Uh, the place is bright and vibrant, and even in the last weeks of the, the mall's life, it's never dark or dingy or anything like that. The mall is inviting.
I think it should be obvious by now of just how much I love this place. I uh, don't believe the haters and all those uh, YouTubers that just spend all day slandering businesses. It, it, this place was great. I realize it's kind of faded with time, but if you could have only seen it in its prime, and we just didn't have like 4K cameras back then when this place was at its peak. Seeing all those amazing Batman movies, and uh, I remember seeing the, the the Star Trek movie with Chris Pine, and Star Wars, uh, The Force Awakens, and the place was always packed, and it was thriving for the longest time. The last time I had gone to the mall was right before the pandemic hit. They had already started like the redevelopment. There was this really awesome mini golf course. I came with a coupon and played like six rounds that day and it was an epic mini golf course and let's face it, mini golf that's air conditioned is awesome, especially in Florida in the summer. The redevelopment was in progress. There was a bunch of optimism in the mall. Uh, the vendors were excited. There were a bunch of big banners showing the indoor go-kart track that was going to be built. They were showing off the indoor uh, roller skating rink that was going to be built beside that. They were going to uh, build uh, the axe throwing and the billiards room and some of that stuff made it but then the global pandemic hit and it all slowly faded away. So I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about another one of the stores that was here at the Crystal River Mall. Uh, good old storefront 363, which was uh, the Radio Shack for, as far as I can remember, it did cl close within the last couple years, but um, I believe the Radio Shack opened with the mall in 1990, and, and I remember Radio Shacks from when I was a kid, even before the mall opened. When I was in um, elementary and middle school in the 1980s, I used to take uh, computer programming classes and learn, learn the basic language on the good old Tandy TRS-80 color computers. And that was pretty groundbreaking technology back then. Uh, most of the, the computers, like either IBM or Apple, they were just uh, monochrome screens. But those uh, Radio Shack computers, they actually could do color graphics and sound. It was pretty amazing. And then circa 1990, when the Radio Shack opened here, I was really into remote control cars, and Radio Shack had some of the best remote control cars. I still have my Jeep from this Radio Shack. It had the uh, monster truck tires on it. It was awesome. And then, obviously, as a, a teenager, I uh, I evolved into uh, you know the the CV radio stuff and TV antennas and you know what was great about Radio Shack is they carried all the spare parts for repairing electronics. So. If you had a bad capacitor on a motherboard or a transistor that went bad in your radio, you could uh, just grab a soldering iron and uh, pick up the pieces at this Radio Shack. What's great about the internet is I found some vintage footage of working here at the Crystal River Mall at the Radio Shack, so I'm going to play it right now and we're going to watch what a typical day of uh, working at the Crystal River Radio Shack looked like. And as you can see, it was pretty exciting. I mean, this is pretty much every day here at the Crystal River Mall. There was always a, a fun quality to it, and um, the Radio Shack was just another business here, and, you know, this is a typical day. I guess it was a different time back then. The 1990s, it was more exuberant, and, you know, you would de see a, a, a typical local celebrity here and there. You know, Hulk Hogan lived in Tampa, so not far. I'm sure Hulk Hogan shopped here all the time. For the rest of this video, I'm just going to take one last walk through the mall. Thanks for the great memories my old friend.
This could go on for infinity.